So we are continuing our discussion on the bhakti journey. Yesterday, what was the topic that we mainly discussed? Sorry, one person. Anyone? Yeah? Yeah, it's bhajana kriya. So if you consider the stages, what are the stages we have discussed till now? First was? Shraddha. Shraddha is? Curiosity. Maybe there is something of value over here. We start with that. And after that? Sadhu Sangha. So we discussed how Sadhu Sangha basically helps us to come to from the stage of curiosity to the stage of commitment. So Bhajana Kriya is commitment. Where we start practicing the process. Now after this the next stage is very long or at least it can feel very long hmm? so within this we are discussing various stages so now the multiple stages that are there it is not that they are linear it is not that this stage comes after that stage after that stage they are struggles inside us and we face them at different levels so we are classifying them in a particular way but that doesn't mean Somebody may not face the sec first one, second one, when, when which will come, that may vary. So we discussed one stage yesterday in that, which was the one? Vishaya Sangara. So Vishaya is sense objects. Sangara is fighting against them, Sangram. And we discussed the principle of, how do we deal with it? Yes, we said boundaries. So, the Vishaya, the sense objects are out there and to de if you are fighting with them, we need some boundaries. And we discussed four principles. What was CAST? Category, ability, space, time. Yes, excellent. So now, we will discuss the inner aspects of this battle. It's like there is an enemy out there and we have a boundary. But now there's an enemy in here also. There could be inside the country, there could be criminals. There could also be cross-border terrorism. And we keep some terrorists outside the country, but there is some have already come inside. So we will now talk about the inner challenges. Now we could say all of this at one level is the inner challenge only. But the inner challenge can be aggravated or compounded by external challenges or external temptations. So like if a country has an internal rebellion, at the same time there is an external aggression, then it will be far more difficult to deal with that. So we will discuss two aspects over here. One is Vyudha Vikalpa. Now Vyudha Vikalpa, it can mean many things, but Vikalpa is al alternative, so looking for alternatives. And the other is Niyama Akshama. Niyama Akshama. Kshama is Kshamata. So Niyama Akshama is the inability to follow rules. So now these terms can be understood in different ways. I am, I'll focus on understanding them in one particular framework. So, you remember when we talked about decision making, we said that there are two aspects inside us which contribute to the decision making. What is that? Yes, reason and emotion. And they are associated with buddhi and mana, intelligence and mind. So, we can say that this viewed of a kalpa, looking for alternatives, this arises when the buddhi it lacks conviction so we are not yet convinced that this is the thing to do say at this point we are looking for some ways to get out because maybe this demand is too much maybe it's not necessary if like somebody has got diabetes and the doctor says no sugar so, okay, can I take one spoon sugar? What is the big deal if I take one spoon? 
If I take one sweet per week, what is the big deal? So at this point, the person is not intellectually convinced. Hmm. And now at the level of mana, you are looking for vikalpa over here. So we are looking for alternatives because we think, yeah, maybe I can do this also and do this also. Hmm. But when it's at the level of mana, that is okay. I, I have to give up sugar because it's very damaging for my diabetes, but I can't do it. So in one sense, here there is, is there a need? We are not yet even convinced. Maybe is this such a, so absolutely necessary? Maybe we shouldn't be fanatical. You know, we have to be balanced. Isn't it? And yes, we need to be balanced, but we have to have a balanced understanding of what balanced means. <laughs> Sometimes being balanced can become a justification for not following standards. So uh, is there a need? Now, when we talk about viewed avikalpa, and that is niyamakshama. Akshama means that it's inability. That... How can I do it? I can't. Here the question is, how can I do it? It is not so much in terms of wanting to know a process as feeling that I can't do it. So here, it is a person who lacks hope, lacks confidence. Here, confidence means you are talking about personal ability. I can't do it. So I hope the difference between these two is clear at this point. That one is, maybe there is, uh, maybe it's not too important, maybe it's too big an issue made out of this. Mm -hmm. The other is, okay, it is a big issue, I understand it, but it's, it just seems beyond me. Mm -hmm. So like an alcoholic may think, you know, see in the general western culture, uh, drinking is a very common part of life. In fact, there was a British thinker who said, the taste of wine is the proof that God loves us. <laughs> so, his idea was that if God didn't exist, how could something as tasty as wine exist? So, wine is the proof of God. And not just God, a loving, merciful God. <laughs> so now, is wine an intoxicant? Of course. But the prevailing philosophy over there is, drink, but don't get drunk. Hmm? That's like saying, okay, you can go on top of a big mountain cliff, peer down, look, bend down as much as you want to look down, but don't fall down. Yeah. Well, why take the risk? Isn't it? So, like that, drink, but not get drunk. Now, are there people who can follow that? Yeah, there are many people who follow that. You know, isn't it? But there is an unnecessary danger over there. So now, now while many people might be able to do it, but somebody who has been an alcoholic, and they are trying to recover for it, I mean, whenever they drink, they get drunk. And drunk basically means that you just completely lose your intelligence, lose your common sense, and then you do undignified, foolish, terrible things. So that's getting drunk. That's the terminology of drink, but don't get drunk. But somebody who has a history of getting drunk, for them to even drink once, what happens is, for some people, like, this will come, we'll come to this particular point when you come to Niyamakshama also again. See, for some people, it may like be like a, the slope may be very gentle. Here it is drink, and here is get drunk. That means it is a slope, but it is not a very sharp slope. So, some people, they may do something uh, that, okay, you, you know, watch TV for 15 minutes and stop after that. But, okay, you can, now, if somebody is slipping down, this is a gentle slope. Hmm? They can stop at any time, generally speaking. But on the other hand, if somebody is, so this is the, you could say, the inner landscape. And I'll ex explain later how the inner landscape gets shaped like this. Hmm? So for such a person, you know, one day, if somebody eats a little bit more sweets, or a little, eats a, a little over eats, that's okay, it's not a big deal. Hmm? Most of the time. But suppose somebody has been a foodaholic. Somebody has been just like, binging on food. 
till the point that you know, they have to it can become pathologically harmful there's an australia i was i was giving a class and one doctor came to me and he said that once he was called to the emergency he said what happened there was a young man he had eaten so much chicken that they, you know, kids people sometimes kids are foolish they have all kinds of foolish competitions you know who can eat the cake fastest who can eat more burgers or whatever so they had a chicken eating competition and he had eaten so many chicken that actually his throat had become literally clogged and he said i had to go there open his mouth and put a prong inside and take chicken out from there it's horrible but so there are people if somebody has eaten like that then they may have to be very very careful about eating so for some people the inner landscape may be gentle for some other people that inner landscape may be like a steep fall so from here if somebody is over here if they go down this slope then zoop they will just go down so for us the for different people the inner landscape may be different and say some some people say they have a habit of oversleeping okay now i'm feeling a little tired let me sleep 10 minutes more and then sleep for 10 minutes and they will wake up after 10 minutes but somebody say 10 minutes becomes 1 hour it becomes 2 hours it becomes 3 hours and if we know that then maybe 10 minutes no more 10 minutes oh, so each one of us has a different kind of inner landscape and you could also put it this difference in the inner landscape can be different not just for different people it can be different with respect to different temptations somebody may have no temptation for watching tv but somebody may have a lot of temptation for gossiping and you start gossiping start doing prajalpa and 5 minutes becomes 5 hours and we don't even realize it mm -hmm. so each this inner landscape may be different for different people with respect to different particular temptations now it may also be different with respect to different situations some people have an innate sense of responsibility that you know that okay i can talk with you but i have to go for the i have this job i have this service i have to go there and they'll do that so so but for some people you know once they get into something they forget all responsibilities it like uh, <clears throat> sometimes people start watching tv and they get so caught in watching tv or surfing social media that they forget i have to go and pick up my child from school you know the child is poor sitting at school waiting and then the parents feel so embarrassed what happened they can't say i was watching tv oh, but so sometimes people have no sense of responsibility or they have a very low sense of responsibility so now some situations we may take them as optional you know if our family tells us buy something from office buy something on your way back from office we may forget it but if the boss tells complete this by time and time now you cannot just forget what the boss says otherwise the boss will forget you only they will never fire you and forget you that will not work so basically the point is according to situations also this inner landscape may be different for different people so a thing over here is that some people may there in so if you consider this is a steep slope so from this perspective if we consider this as a picture of inner landscape now here for this person if the if they mistake that while their inner landscape is steep they think it to be gentle if they mistake like that they may think okay one slip down one little relaxing of the rule what is the big deal so here they may look for vikalpa vyudha vikalpa that okay it's not such a big deal if you don't follow hmm? it is that because they don't think it is so serious now that is where we come in to justification rationalization and i'll talk about this a little later more but i'm talking firmly about the difference between the two but suppose somebody has slipped and they have come to this point now from there 
to stop themselves may be impossible now gravity just takes over at that time so after this if somebody is always sl already slipping down a steep slope then to stop it may be akshama i cannot do it niyama akshama so it is it is just total helplessness hopelessness we'll talk about the difference between the two also but that point it is just one is unable to do it so for first we need to strengthen our intelligence second is we need to strengthen our mind we need to purify our mind <clears throat> so today i'll try to keep a little more time for questions also yesterday we didn't have time for questions if not today morning we will have today evening a longer session for questions now in general if we consider in terms of four quadrants that we have our mind and we have our intelligence now i could use the word strong or healthy i'm using healthy means the mind understands what is good and similarly the intelligence can be strong or healthy now if we consider based on this there are four possibilities there is a weak mind and a weak intelligence hmm. so this person is more or less powerless <coughs> they don't have much intelligence to make plans or schemes or plots but their mind is also weak that means they don't have any strong desires within them hmm. so such people will mostly be like depressed they don't do anything they will be in, in tamaguna tamasik not everybody in this tamasik some people you know, for them to just get out of bed itself is a big tapasya like i just don't feel like doing anything such people are not like to likely to do much harm to others hmm? <laughs> <laughs> so many times uh, sometimes governments prefer their population to be docile like that so if the government provides lots of entertainment lots of sports lots of porn then people just keep enjoying those things and they don't even see what the government is doing hmm? so and so now this could be a manipulative tool but the point is the mind is weak the intelligence is weak the person who can't do much now when i am using the word weak over here i am using it in a sense that there are there are very little desires i'm not talking about whether desires are good or bad i'm just talking here about desires per se so right now let's remove the healthy part from it so now if a person has a strong mind and a weak intelligence now what do i mean here mind means desires and intelligence is associated with convictions so if there are strong desires and weak convictions then what is going to happen is that person is going to be is going to be you could pay uh, that person is going to run here and there they are made to run here and there by their desires eat this watch this buy this and some people might get into a huge amount of debt because of that i was in canada one devil told me that he is in inheritance law so inheritance law generally in india inheritance law means he's attorney so is it like if there are if there is a patriarch in the family and the parents have a lot of wealth and then the kids they fight among themselves who will get the wealth maybe if the will is not very clear then there can be a problem you know wherever there is a will what happens there are many willing relatives <laughs> <laughs> they come to fight with each other <laughs> so so i thought that's what inheritance law means he said yes that is there but in america that is not a big issue so much he said what happens parents want to give the money to their children but if the children have not learned discipline 
then if after the parents die all the property comes in the name of the children and then the children can squander all the money and nowadays as he people don't even need much effort to spend money isn't it so somebody can go through a million dollars within a month uh, they can just go to expensive places buy this buy that can buy all kinds of crap but so the parents they want to give the money to the children but they say per year they'll get only this much money and more than enough for the maintenance and some enjoyment but they don't want the children to squander all the money and then what happens the children after the parents pass away the children file a case in the court and they say that my parents were not mentally stable when they wrote this will so break this will and i want the money right away so this devotee in inheritance law he said the, my key speciality is writing wills that cannot be broken using arguments like mental instability <laughs> so so that is itself a specialization mm. so now the point is that if a person's mind is very strong and the intelligence is not strong then it can be a very troublesome thing the person will just spend without thinking the person will enjoy without thinking now we may say hey, this there can be different kinds of enjoyment also like somebody may want to enjoy good food but they may say okay this is not very healthy this is tasty and healthy the person can you now so that's the person will just be controlled here and there now the intelligence is strong the mind is not strong hmm. is the third situation so now relatively speaking such a person can be peaceful hmm. at least the mind is not making the person run here and there <coughs> and the person can be peaceful and focused okay or let's say focus let's use the word steady okay i know this is the right thing and i will do this so the desires are not very strong in such a person mm. now <clears throat> if the person's mind is strong and the desires are also strong then such a person can actually be powerful what do you mean by powerful over here see i started by saying that mind is not always an enemy the mind can have desires or it it's natural for the mind to have desires and now some some desires can be positive some desires can be negative remember we talked about vritti and vasana so there is a difference and we'll ex explore that difference a bit more but the point is that say somebody is very intelligent and they say uh, they also have strong desire you know india has deserts india has places where there are floods so can we create a link by which the water from the flooded area will go to the deserted area now the indus valley civilization in india in indian history as far as the, our history goes is unique you know it had a very good irrigation system very good urban infrastructure was there parallel level of infrastructure is not seen even in the greek civilization or any other civilization at that time so the point is they were intelligent people so somebody is intelligent their intelligence is strong and their mind is strong they have a they have understanding they can do planning and they can have desires then they can do some good now they are powerful they can be powerful in a constructive way they can be powerful in a destructive way also hmm. hitler had a strong desire i want germany to rule the world and his intelligence it was misdirected but he reinterpreted the whole aryan theory to say that we are the original aryans and we are we populated the whole world actually and therefore we are meant to rule the whole world he came up with the ideology and he he was a good orator he poisoned the entire german state so somebody who has a strong mind and strong intelligence depending on how they use it it can be constructive it can be destructive but such people are powerful people so we would like the mind and intelligence both to be strong but the mind to be filled with healthy desires so here now i am trying to differentiate between strong is not the same as healthy we may say at a physical level strong and healthy are the same thing somebody is strong they must be healthy but at the level of mind 
somebody may have strong desires but their desires may not be healthy desires isn't it like somebody if you consider jihadis they have strong desires you know and they even have strong convictions but they really believe that the, the world of jannat or wherever nobody has seen that but they have strong belief that oh if i go there there is 73 virgins waiting for me there's not even a one virgin waiting for me over here so let me go there so there's strong desires and strong convictions but the desires themselves may be destructive may be harmful that's why strong and healthy is not the same thing hmm? same way you can have strong convictions hmm? but just because the strong convictions are there they need not be healthy convictions hmm? so the marxists actually believed that you know if we just take all the wealth from the wealthy people and distribute among the poor people then everybody can be happy a strong belief but the assumption over there was that wealthy people will have become wealthy by exploiting and abusing others now that is a possibility but it's also possible that wealthy people have become wealthy because they are competent because they are hard working because they are intelligent and if you just and poor people may be poor because they are exploited and abused but poor people may be poor because they are lazy because they are incompetent because they are they are having un, bad habits both are possibilities but if simply take wealth from the wealthy and give it to poor it's not that everybody will become wealthy that everybody will end up becoming poor because society will have no wealth creators it like they tried it in school also that after exam they said we should have no discrimination so everybody will get the same marks and they said to, to consider the marks of the highest student consider the mark of the lowest student do an average give the average marks to everyone now if you do that what happens those who are intelligent those who can get top marks they lose the impetus why should we study we are not going to get any recognition and those who are poor they say even if we don't study we are going to get better marks than what we deserve <laughs> isn't it so it is spectacularly backfired so my point is somebody can have strong convictions but their convictions may not be right convictions so here we are talking about the mind and intelligence krishna says that lust is situated not just in the senses but also in in the mind and the intelligence indriyani mano buddhir so here <clears throat> so ideally speaking we could say that if you consider prabhupad prabhupad had strong conviction that mahaprabhu's mercy is meant for the world but then he had also strong desire that bhakti sanat thakur had wanted many of his disciples it is like a standing instruction to all his disciples that you uh, help me in the wish mission to the west but prabhupad had the strongest desire and that's why he created ways and means by which he could go abroad hmm? the gaudiya mart didn't support him in any way in fact some of them some people even tried to sabotage his mission but still he went so the desire it's important thing desire itself is not a bad thing desire directed to a worthy cause can be a very good thing hmm? so we are, we are, these two particular things i am talking about view of kalpa and niyamakshama we are trying to give a background to understand how they are relevant for us okay so now so if we want to do something hmm, say if we want to discipline ourselves in some way okay i want to regulate how much i sleep how much i spend on social media time how much i eat how much time i spend gossiping there are typical things we may say Uh, how much we uh, time is spent in sensual indulgence whatever it is so if you want to discipline ourselves so for that we need both we need conviction hmm? conviction will be our intelligence needs to be first of all convinced this is important this is necessary hmm? and then our mind needs purification hmm so purification means are the impure desires are not dominating our mind mm-hmm. 
so purification can be used in a spiritual sense but it can be used only in the functional sense purification like pure water is water that is meant that will do what water is meant to do water is meant to quench thirst but if water gives me disease then that is not pure water so we could say pure means there can be many ways of understanding pure that means it does what it is meant to do so for example if a student comes for studying so a student comes to an iit an iit a good college and now there were very bright future awaits them in the future but first of all conviction has to be there that you know this this is a this is a promising option that is open for me and then after that you could say purification in a student but let's start bringing in a spiritual context would be that if i come to college my primary purpose is studying yeah other kids may just spend time having fun and dating and partying and boozing but that's not what i have come here for so so pure so at that time a pure desire would mean that if i have come for studying study mm. somebody come somebody becomes a sports player then now along with sports you can get fame you can get distracted by so many things uh, but okay i have come here to study that's what i'm going i going come here to play i have my workout i have my training i have my practice that's what i'm going to do primarily so basically <clears throat> when we are using the word purification means our desires are aligned hmm. so when conviction is the purpose is worthwhile this is a worthwhile purpose this is a important purpose and then purpose means this is what i have come to do and purification means our desires are aligned with our purpose so let's try to look at these two things now <clears throat> when our intelligence is not convinced then if the intelligence is unconvinced then what we do, what do we do we try to look for alternatives we may try to look for shortcuts we may try to look for escape ways how can i pretend to do this without doing this it's like you know sometimes we have devotee parents and say uh, if they have kids who have grown up with their parents being devotees so the parents want their, them to come to a temple but they don't want to come to the temple so they come to the temple but you know in the temple they may not talk with any devotees they may just spend all the time on their phone or they may have some other friend also who is not interested in the temple and they will talk about movies and they'll talk about sports and they'll talk about girlfriends and boyfriends and nothing else so they are coming to the temple but they are not convinced about the value of coming to the temple so in the temple they are looking for alternatives to krishna isn't it so when there is viewed a vikalpa it's like we may externally be in krishna consciousness but we are looking for alternatives to krishna to focus our mind so if this is happening then this is where the conviction of the intelligence comes through primarily hearing but it is not just hearing after that there is shravana then after that there is contemplating there is nididhyasana each one of us needs to contemplate so with that without that contemplation okay this sound nice but it's not applicable for me it is not relevant for me so we need to contemplate after contemplating there is assimilating or we could say realizing now realizing is a big step but it may take time to realize but at least we assimilate in the sense that we are there is accepting i that is we get we find it convincing for ourselves yes this is something which i accept so for example the bhagavad gita says yehi samsparsha bhoga dukkha yonayevati 
so now we may hear that we may quote that verse also but we may secretly disbelieve it <laughs> you know yeah you know maybe it's a little extreme there is enjoyment and sense pleasure also where the dukkha i don't see why dukkha over here well yes is there enjoyment of course krishna also says there is enjoyment over there bhoga is there but the problem is it is it is just a drop it ends and after it ends then there is so much dissatisfaction frustration so we need conviction so i'll talk about some ways in which we can get the conviction hmm. <coughs> so quite often if we consider that there are the sen- that the senses and there are the sense objects hmm. and generally if the senses come in contact so there's a desire for the sense objects and the desire leads to contact then through this there is pleasure so if we eat some delicious food there is pleasure if we see something beautiful there is pleasure if we hear something nice musical melodious there is pleasure so now for most people when the pleasure is less or it is nil that the diagnosis that they do why they think it is because the sense objects are not available or they are not good enough that means that oh you know i am not enjoying the food because in our hostel the cook is not good hmm and you know, or you know, the menu is not according to my liking and there is some truth to this hmm? you can always improve the quality of the sense objects and we can get some pleasure hmm? but there is a limitation to this i was in america you know many times kids they put all kinds of uh, weird coats on their t-shirt and sometimes they are not even aware of it so there was this kid he had a coat that 90% of the world's women are beautiful the remaining 10% are in my college <laughs> now was like a slap in the face of all the girls in that college but along with that see this is a illusion why it's a illusion how do you know how 90% of the world's women look like and what do you see on tv what do you see on ads what do you see in mainstream media or social media and there most of the images are doctored you know first there is physical makeup and then there is digital makeup <laughs> <laughs> so first the photos are in the best shape and then there is photoshopping of the photos so what happens is people start thinking that actually everyone looks far more attractive than the people i see around me and then so they think okay i am not enjoying because the sense objects are not good enough but, uh, but you know, the problem is while this is a reason another bigger reason is our senses themselves are limited even if somebody owned a five star hotel where they could eat as much as they wanted the belly's capacity is limited isn't it so there is this senses being limited is a far bigger factor in frustrating our capacity to enjoy whichever sense pleasure we take up it is it there is always a limitation over there so our mind always gets excited whenever some tempting sense object comes up okay no if only i could get that i would enjoy so much and it is true there is some enjoyment madhu lavai prahlad mara says that there is a drop of nectar but shamayandura pai so the idea here is that our pursuit of happiness through sense pleasure is a intrinsically doomed pursuit it is not extrinsically doomed extrinsically doomed is that i don't have the good enough sense objects that's why i can't enjoy 
but intrinsically doomed means even if i get the best sense objects still i cannot increase the capacity of my senses no matter what i do they are going to be limited and that cannot be increased so the pursuit of sense pleasure now i am not going here into a elaborate analysis of sense pleasure i am just giving some ways in which we can convince ourselves so pursuit of sense pleasure it is doomed it is not just extrinsically doomed extrinsic means oh outside the sense objects are not available but it is also intrinsically doomed <coughs> so if you understand this then all the excitement that a person gets see a person can be sexually agitated 24 hours a day but if a person even gets the most attractive object to enjoy with the body's capacity to enjoy is just for a few minutes and then it's over and even those few minutes keep decreasing as the person keeps getting older so it's intrinsically doomed now another way to look at this is that whenever there is indulgence whenever there is indulgence <coughs> what happens is we initially feel pleasure but after some time all that we feel is relief like alcoholics when they drink first time maybe first time now they have to get used to the taste of alcohol but after some time they feel high hmm? however over a period of time it is not that drinking alcohol makes them go high rather not drinking alcohol makes them go so low that they have to drink to even feel normal and be functional so there's uh, one devotee who was alcoholic then he started become devotee and he is given up he said you know after some time i drank not because it was so enjoyable i drank because not drinking was so miserable not drinking was so miserable so what happens over here is that while indulgence does give some pleasure but what happens after indulgence the desire becomes stronger many times when we enjoy we feel relief so how it is is that say okay come on you know imagine this is a flame hmm hmm <coughs> not a map of some country but <laughs> <coughs> now if we put a large block of wood large block on the flame the flame will get extinguished will it at least the flame will disappear isn't it but the problem is that what if the block of wood catches fire isn't it there's a flame and i put some heavy object on it it gets extinguished but if the object is inflammable the flame has disappeared but the flame has not got extinguished it has disappeared till that block catches fire and then the flame will become even bigger isn't it so for us indulgence when we indulge in some pleasure we feel okay you know i am that desire has gone away but the problem is that desire has not gone away it has just gone down and afterwards it will come up stronger it will come up stronger so that's what happens is it's gone down not away hmm? so it appears as if it is gone away but it comes back again and next time when it comes back see initially if you consider even the curve of a desire initially the desire might just be like a prompt come on let's watch this let's eat this but after some time it becomes not just a prompt it becomes a push come on do this like prompt means somebody is coming from here let's go for a movie but push means somebody is we are sitting somebody is pushing us off our chair come on let's go and watch a movie 
and after some time it actually becomes like a prod you know what is a prod the word prod is used now it is prod or a prong it's like somebody is piercing us from within somebody say somebody is not just come on let's go for a movie somebody has got something like a trishul piercing come on go if you don't go for the movie i'll keep prong i'll keep piercing you so after some time the desire it it actually becomes like a torment from inside that and what we call as enjoyment here it might be pleasure but here it is just a relief from the torment that's what it's not that i am enjoying when i do this it is not doing it is so miserable it's so unbearable that I, that what i call as enjoyment is actually just a relief hmm? now this is what happens when somebody gets into say drug addiction and they want some they want to decide i'll give it up that is what they call as withdrawal pains now withdrawal pains now different uh, people sometimes there are psychological symptoms the person can't concentrate can't think but sometimes there are even physiological symptoms where the person starts trembling they just can't physically function and sometimes they have to, while giving up a particular drug there has to be some other medicinal drug has to be given and carefully the person has to be brought down so so if we understand this that actually what i'm calling as pleasure it's not pleasure it's just a relief from a self created torment like say if there were two people say if say this is the hostel this is the college and there are two kids say if along the way there is a bar now the one kid has never drunk and has no interest in drinking for whatever reason that kid may not even notice the bar after some time it is just a part of the landscape you go ahead but for the kid who has drunk then as soon as that sees the bar the urge comes come on let's go, go and drink he says no today i got a class he just go drink once you know what's the big deal you know nobody will even notice it last time you did that nobody noticed and you know you go there take one drink and then let's take one more and then even if that person says no there is so much like psychological tug of war that is there so much emotional energy is drained in that fighting so if now why is that torment there because that person drank initially hmm? is that person is just not so that's why i'm saying it's a self created torment and drinking is not so much a pleasure as a relief from the self created torment and the relief is also a temporary relief it's like putting a block of wood to extinguish the fire and what happens as the fire becomes bigger and bigger you need bigger and bigger blocks of wood also the same quantity doesn't work after some time so now we could go into psychology and how the, the mind you know the dopamine is the pleasure or pleasure enzyme and then that when people get dopamine hits they want more and more severe dopamine hits the same pleasure does not give, or the same stimulus does not give pleasure that's how the mind gets conditioned also but the point is this is another way we can analyze that you know this kind of indulgence is a dead end i don't want to go in this direction so when we may hear many classes we may read many things but we have to contemplate and find out what convinces me each one of us is different each one of us each of our intelligences is different so that view of vikalpa that alternatives we are seeking so no we cannot live on borrowed conviction like sometimes some devotee gives a very powerful class and sometimes the devotee gives a, like a instruction don't do this and we say okay i just out of respect for this person i won't do it so that is more like borrowed conviction like kids because my parents have told me don't do this they won't do it but if that is the only reason it may be very difficult for the kid to continue that throughout the life the borrowed conviction cannot can take us only so far <coughs> it has to become personalized conviction i we cannot live on borrowed conviction for very long so what we hear so if i go back over here, where is it yeah hearing from hearing what we will get so initially it's like borrowed conviction 
somebody else's conviction i am living on that but here it becomes internalized conviction like borrowed conviction is like i am borrowing money from someone and i am spend i am spending that money then i have to constantly depend on that person to give me money but internalized conviction means i have got my own income sources and so i can think i can reflect on my experiences i can reflect on the point that i have heard now then i am convinced of this myself now of course we may still need to refresh our convictions because what happens is even if we have a strong conviction even if we have a healthy conviction the world is doing a lot of propaganda and the world is undermining our convictions so we need to keep hearing regularly but hearing it should not just be borrowed convictions slowly it has to go inside <clears throat> there's one social critic he said the problem with the world is that the wise are full of doubts and the foolish are full of certainties they're full of conviction like say you know i have a maternal uncle who went to america he was among the like the first probably first 100 people from india who went to america in the 19 uh, 1960s end america liberalized its immigration laws and then indians started going to america so he went in the early 1970s so he has such conviction that he has he has arranged for almost like 55 of our relatives to come to america he used various legal loopholes and this he started his own company and he employed people and he wanted me also to come to america he didn't have a son so he wanted me to inherit his company i frustrated him unfortunately <laughs> unfortunately whatever it is but when i talk with him you know his conviction that people should come to go america sometimes i feel i feel it's more than my conviction that people should go back to godhead <laughs> <laughs> so the idea is <coughs> now are things better in america yeah in some ways they are better materially they are comfortable but it can be very lonely at a physical level there's a lot of comfort at a psychological level there's a lot of loneliness a lot of mental health issues that's a complex thing but the point is that sometimes people's convictions about material things may be very strong and our convictions about spiritual things may not be that strong so we need to strengthen our convictions many times if i feel my determination is not strong what is not strong it the underlying conviction itself and this is good for me this is not just good this is the best for me or this is bad for me this is going to take me to a terrible place so one way so last point i'll take how to get convictions is that see the big picture see the big picture means that somebody may say okay you know i i spend uh, half an hour on social media every day or i watch tv for half an hour every day half an hour not a big deal okay half an hour may not say be a big deal and this i'll give up whenever i want it you know okay okay half an hour daily may not seem a big deal but half an hour per week so would you like to be spending this half an hour on tv or like if somebody says half an hour is very modest some people spend 2 3 6 hours also so do you want to be spending this if somebody spends 2 hours on tv every day do you want to be spending this 2 hours on tv after 10 years well no I, by that time i'll have a career i'll have i'll have responsibility i don't want to spend that okay then do you want to spend it after if consider 10 years in hundreds of hours we will have wasted so much we can do in 100 hours okay what about 5 years maybe so see when what happens is if i am here and one step in this direction one step in this direction doesn't seem to be a big difference but that one step in this direction repeated will take me here one step in this direction will take me here so when we see the big picture then the gravity of the small choice becomes clear to us small choices may not always be small choices because each small choice reinforces our tendency to make that same choice again 
Remember in the first session I talked about the browser? Each time we visit a particular website, that website comes as an auto prompt. So what happens is each choice, it's not in isolation. Oh, I just made one this choice today, tomorrow I won't make it. Each choice, it is, it is in connection, not isolation. What it does is, it becomes a facilitator for similar future choices. Not just similar, it may become worse future choices. So each small choice matters. And that if we understand this, like every action that I do, it is an unwitting commitment to doing the same action again and again, maybe for the rest of my life and not just rest of my life. Krishna says, Kama is Nitya Vairina. It is lifetime after lifetime it will go on. So, each choice, the small choice is not a small choice. So, the, these are just some ways I am giving. The point is we hear many different points in classes and we have to find those points which convince us and then maybe put them in our own words. Maybe write them in our, uh, maybe keep them in note, physical notepad or a notepad on our phone and revisit those points regularly. Otherwise, we will always keep looking for alternatives. And as we are looking for alternatives, then we will never be able to connect with Krishna. Remember, we want to make Krishna bigger, the world smaller. But if you are constantly keep looking at the world, and think it's no big deal, and the world will never become smaller. If you are not consistently focused on looking on Krishna, Krishna will never become bigger. So, we need conviction. So, for us, strengthening our buddhi is very important. Evam buddhe param buddhva. Krishna says that in 343, he gives a very interesting inner hierarchy. He says that there are the sense objects. Hmm? Now, above the sense, this is actually this hierarchy comes in 342. So there are the senses. Indriyani paranyahur indriyebhya param manaha. Above the senses is the mind. Manasas para buddhi. Above this is the intelligence. Yo buddhe paratas saha. Above this is the soul. Now in this particular hierarchy it is not mentioned, but above it is the super soul. Above it all is Krishna. Hmm. So now, if we consider this to be the conditioned soul, now we can say the Paramatma is in our heart, so inside, but let's keep, this is the conditioned soul. Let's, for the time being, keep it outside. So the idea is, that there is a natural pull of gravity toward the sense objects. So the gravity of attachments, the gravity of material desires. We all will get pulled toward the sense objects. So now, how do we go upwards? So, Jiva Goswami says, the key is the Buddha. It is the buddhi that should remind me of the soul. It is the buddhi that should remind me that I am a part of Krishna. It is in Krishna, it is in connecting with Krishna that is my greatest interest. So it is our buddhi that will keep bring the upper upward link. Now, once we grow spiritually, once we become purified, then there can be preeti, there can be prema then we will be naturally attracted towards Krishna. But till we get to that point, the buddhi is extremely important. So, strengthening our buddhi, says buddhi is what keeps us in bhakti. Till we develop pure love for Krishna. And that's why within sadhana bhakti, we offer as vaidhi bhakti. Vaidhi bhakti is, we follow the vidhi of scripture. And that is not just or when the instruction is given, I have to obey it. See, obedience will take us so far. After instruction, there has to be internalization of the instruction. 
that this is good for me, this is in my best interests. We need to be convinced about it. So that view of a culpa, that looking for alternatives will stop when the intelligence is convinced. Now, after that also, that doesn't mean immediately we'll become free from material enjoyment or material indulgence also. We may still fall. That is because my intelligence is convinced, but still my mind keeps pulling me in opposite direction. Hmm. So, uh, <clears throat> what can happen, uh, this I'll discuss in our next session. I, I wanted to go into this uh, view of Vikalpa a little bit more because it is an important key step and it is often overlooked. See, in one sense, gaining conviction is actually easier or faster than gaining purification. Like purification means the mind's desires change. Hmm? That may take time. Like say somebody has diabetes. Hmm? That sugar is bad. Hmm? And the second is, I don't like sugar. Now, for somebody to come to the level of I don't like sugar, that may take a very long time. But, even if I like sugar, it is not good. I like sugar, but I like living more. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I like sugar but I like health more. So, it is so that gaining in changing our intelligence in one sense changing intelligence is easier than changing the mind. So, if we can just strengthen our intelligence although there will be an inner war but that inner war we will have the determination to fight that war at least. And if we fight that war, we can win it. But if we are not even sure whether we should be fighting this war, then the chance of winning is very, very less. So at least we need to be convinced that this war is worth fighting. So Buddhi gives us this conviction. So now, there could be broadly four possibilities. Say, if there is Krishna here, and there is Maya in whatever form here. So, we have our Mana and our Buddhi. So, it is possible that intelligence and mind. So the intelligence is attracted towards Maya, the mind is also attracted towards Maya. So, such a person is, is a materialist. But is not just a materialist, it is like a pure devotee of materialism. <laughs> yeah, that is like what Krishna says that Kamopa Bhoga Parama Etavad Iti Nishchitaha. It is everybody wants sense pleasure, but such people think that there is nothing else apart from this in life. Sense pleasure is the only purpose of life. Kimanyad Kama Haitukam. What other purpose can even be there? There can't, there is no purpose at all. So, such people, we use, generally use the word fanaticism in terms of religion, but such people are fanatical materialists. There's just nothing else at all for them. Now, what may happen, the next stage is, the intelligence goes in this direction, but the mind goes in the opposite direction. So, here, there is a struggle. <clears throat> now, after this, now this is very, very rare, but it is like the in intelligence may go towards Maya, but the mind goes towards Krishna. Now, this can happen if somebody has had Purva Janma Samskar. That means somebody say is born in a very materialistic family, somehow, for whatever reason. But in the spiritual life, they have practiced some spiritual life. So this is actually very rare. Hmm? But what can happen is that the, the best situation is where the intelligence and the mind both go towards Krishna. That means we understand that with the intelligence, 
that Krishna is the most valuable. So with intelligence we understand Krishna is valuable. With the mind we understand Krishna is the most desirable. So Krishna is saying, if we come to this stage, Mai Arpita Mano Buddhi, then he says, Maam Evaishasya Asamshaya. So this is 8.7. Krishna also talks about the same thing in, uh, is it, uh, I think 12.13. Mai Arpita Mano Buddhi, Yomad Bhaktaha Same Priya. So, it's 12.14, something like that. So the idea is that we would like to come to this stage where the intelligence and the mind both are attracted toward Krishna. <coughs> but it may take time. So at least our intelligence should be going toward Krishna even if our mind is not going towards Krishna. So that we come to through by going through the stage of Vyodavikalpa. So personally developing our conviction is important. So that Shravan Nididhyasana, contemplating and then internalizing. Internalizing, one way to do it is speaking and writing. Hmm? See because if you are going to give a class on a particular topic, if you are not confident about it, then what is happening is you will not feel very confident for speaking about it if people ask questions and you won't have answers. If you decide I'm going to speak on a particular topic, then we will actually try to strengthen our conviction. Hmm? And if you're going to write on it, you may write articles for others, but writing for yourself also. Somehow, when we put in our words, now there is an internalization that happens which does not happen if we are not putting things in our own words. Yes, we can memorize scriptural verses, that is wonderful. It's very purifying and uplifting. But a point, we try to articulate it in our own words. Then, like, our words are a part of our thoughts, they are expression of our thoughts. So when we put something in our words, the connection that is developed, that is very deep. Sometimes you may see in conflict resolution, if one, one standard way to do conflict resolution is, that if I am angry with you, then... Before I make my case, the mediator will tell me, you make his case in your words. You know, why does this person not agree with you? What are this person's concerns? It's actually very difficult to do it. And if you genuinely try to put the other person's case in your words, then when our anger toward that person goes down substantially. We may still disagree with them. But okay, I understand where you are coming from. I understand why you think like this. And then the, the discussion becomes much more reasonable. So putting our words on an idea makes that idea much more relatable, intelligible. It remains less foreign for us. So that, uh, uh, that uh, putting it in our words is a very good way to develop the conviction. So I'll summarize what we discussed today. We have discussed today primarily the internal obstacle. The external obstacle with respect to material indulgence we discussed yesterday. Internal obstacle specifically of, of looking for alternatives. The viewed vikalpa. So how do we deal with that? First, we discussed about the inner landscape. Now, how for different people the inner landscape might be a gentle slope, for some people it might be a very steep slope. So, first, so it's there could be a misconception that what is steep, I think it to be gentle. Then that's why we may not take something seriously. So, this misconception will lead to us looking for vikalpa. What is the big deal if I slip down, go down a little bit? But then, if one is actually slipping, then it may be beyond what's control. It may be inability. So, we discussed about how this, this quadrant of intelligence being weak or, of mind being weak or strong and intelligence being weak or strong. So, in one sense, this is the best situation 
but in this situation a person who is powerful can be constructive or destructive so we would like to be constructively powerful so strong desire for krishna strong conviction about krishna that is the best situation to be in so now conviction how do we develop this we discussed about how it is something which is to be moved it has to be moved from borrowed borrowed means we hear so hearing is something which is important but from hearing there is contemplating and we may contemplate and sometimes we contemplate and say i don't find this point very convincing okay that's fair enough it's that although shastra has many points not every point will strike us so contemplating is also a, a part of selecting yeah this is a good point but sometimes you know this if i were to share something i don't think i can tell this story i like this story or like this example this is what i'm going to speak so contemplating and then after that comes internalizing so this internalizing this journey it can be be done by speaking or writing basically putting in our words and then i discussed some examples of that conviction how we can get our conviction i discussed three main points with respect to say sense gratification that the first is that the pleasure is not there that is not because the sense objects are unavailable or they are not good enough but it is also because the senses are limited and nothing can be done about it and second point we discuss is how that what we call as pleasure is actually just a relief it's a relief from a self created torment it like the more we indulge the fire becomes more and more and it burns us from within so what is the actual, the pleasure itself is not very big over there what the third point we discussed so so it's like sometimes we may feel that it's a small choice so it's a small choice is actually not a small choice because what is going to happen is it that choice is going to create a conditioning and that conditioning is going to lead to a repetition of the choice so therefore a small choice is not a small choice so understanding that can we may say okay this i don't want to do this we see the big picture so there are various ways these are just examples of how we may get conviction but each one of us needs to strengthen our conviction and then after that has been done at least even if our mind is going in one direction at least our intelligence will be going in the other direction so we'll at least be fighting hmm? be fighting then after that we will eventually come to be winning but if you're not fighting there is no chance of winning at all thank you very much hare krishna so we have time for a few questions we'll just take about this topic today yes please where is the mic is the mic there maybe you can speak loudly i'll repeat the question hari krishna so i want to ask this question that uh, you explained uh, niyama akshama with respect to uh, view the vikalpa in the example that the slope is steep and we miss uh, uh, we uh, misinterpret as uh, gentle right that was for viewed viewed vikalpa that was not for niyama akshama no uh, misunderstanding we... it is viewed vikalpa yes uh... niyama akshama is actually if somebody is just falling down huh. and i say you somebody else you got to stop somebody else might be able to stop but this person might not be able to stop so what might be possible for somebody to do it may not be possible for somebody else to do because their landscape is different yeah go ahead yes uh, so basically you uh, explain niyamakshama as a in correlation with uh, viewed vikalpa and uh, and the last part of your lecture you explained uh, the two as quite independent so uh, that mind uh, mind goes uh, in other direction and intelligence goes in other direction so i cannot understand the exact correlation or uh, the okay uh, i use the same example to explain the two points but two are different points like i give the diabetes example like 
somebody is not even convinced that sugar is the cause of diabetes you know diabetes can have so many different causes there are so many people who don't take sugar still they get diabetes i know this person is eating sugar every day throughout their life they not got diabetes so you know you are actually you are a, you know do you hate sugar that's why you are telling me not to eat sugar so if i am not convinced that's completely one different thing but somebody says i am convinced sugar is bad for me but the cravings that come i just can't bear them so there are two different things i use the same example to illustrate a point that uh, <clears throat> for somebody uh, the if they think if somebody knows this floor is so steep they will not even think of going down that floor hmm? but if somebody is actually thinking the floor is not very steep then what is the harm so that misconception is viewed vikalpa so the same example can be used for both but they are two distinct things okay, thank you here is a yeah okay. where is the mic yeah hari krishna pro um, like um, i'm i've heard from the class that you know when the mind is weak we have we have con- low in confidence and when the intelligence is weak we have low in conviction like in many well, cases more than confidence it's put the word hope 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 is less confidence is there but the word confidence has many different connotations okay, yeah. hope is we just don't have much hope sometimes in our personal case or in a devotee case that we find we see that sometimes when we are going in the low sleep that through our intelligence through shastra we can understand that we are actually going through that path and then we understand the consequences also that what is about to happen that where where the path is leading to and then but even after realizing that having such thing that it becomes an inability to actually do something about it and sometimes yeah. even if we we'll talk about some... that in the future session okay because you know, that's a different uh, topic so we have to find some source of strength that will keep us going on so sometimes in that particular area we may not we just don't feel like chanting no matter we may understand how important the holy name is maybe then we push ourselves but if we can't then we may decide okay now maybe maybe i'll read something maybe i'll hear some kirtan see the mind is like a child sometimes the parents have to force the child but you cannot force the child beyond a particular limit so we'll talk about that inner negotiation that we need to do when we'll talk about uh, about niyamakshama and we'll also be talking about one more that is uh, gantarla and our motivation goes up and down okay. but we have to negotiate over there to find out what is the, how can i move ahead yes please contemplating on right things why it seems to be artificial and an austerity means on negative things it is it seems natural why does Easy. okay why does contemplating on good things seem artificial or austerity well that's because the conditioning is there whatever we have contemplated on in the past it is not necessarily right or wrong it applies to right or wrong but it doesn't apply only to that say if you have studied a subject before hmm, then the learning more about that subject is relatively easier because you already if suppose yeah, if if we have suppose both familiarity and interest in a subject then to study that subject further is easier but suppose if we don't have familiarity we don't have interest then taking that subject like say it's it's going to be very difficult so for us we don't have to be too hard on ourselves we may not have contemplated philosophical or spiritual truths previously and we don't have that habit so we building that habit it does take time it does take effort it will happen but the if we don't have the habit it is going to be difficult so let's accept that so try to associate try to make the contemplation easier in some ways maybe discuss with some other devotee whenever you're going to read you know try to if you find if there's some other devotee how do they contemplate hey i did think about it from this way mm. so sometimes if you are hearing a class on a particular verse i find that if you want to develop contemplativeness um, syn- synergizing our reading and hearing is very helpful now we often hear many classes and it's good 
but if somebody has given systematic classes on one section of scripture then we read that section and we hear the classes on that section then what happens is not only we get better understanding oh this verse it can be thought from this perspective also this verse this point can be looked at from this perspective also so Prabhupada says to study scripture scrutinizingly means to study it from different perspectives so when we see okay it can be thought of like this also it can be thought of like this also see contemplating it's a habit but like every other habit it may need some help in developing it like cycling is a habit but we have to practice cycling but sometimes we may also have to learn, you know, what does it mean to be balanced? You know, I don't lean this way, I don't lean this way, I don't paddle too much on one side too, with too much force. There are things which have to be learned. So, there's practicing, but there's also learning some things which, are, which we may not just not know. So, I think seeing how others contemplate can also be very helpful in developing the habit to contemplate. And as we keep doing it, it will become easier with time. Okay. Thank you. Yes, please. The mic. Yeah. There, way behind, I think. We'll take one or two questions and then we'll stop. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Where is the mic? Okay, yeah. Uh, we have heard that uh, there are two types of conviction borrowed conviction and personalized conviction. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, heard that there are two types of Shraddha Lokya Shraddha, uh, Shraddha, and Shastrik Shraddha. So, uh, uh, does it uh, ma uh, does borrowed conviction match exactly to Lokya Shraddha, Shraddha and uh, personalized conviction match to Shastrik Shraddha or they can be a combination? I, th I think they are two different categories itself. They are two different ways of looking at things. And as far as what I have seen, I have not seen Prabhupada really make a categorical difference between Laukik Shraddha, Shraddha and Shastrik Shraddha. So, <clears throat> if you see the Bhagavad Gita itself, uh, talks about faith in the three modes. 17 chapter, Shraddha, Trai, Vibhaga, Yoga. And it doesn't say that faith in Sattva Guna is Shastrik or faith in Tamaguna is Tamasik. You know, somebody can have faith in Tamasik Shastra. In Shastra also, there are Tamasik Shastra. There are Shastras which talk about animal sacrifice and intoxication. So you can have Shastriya Shraddha and that can be Tamasik Shraddha also. Isn't it? So there are many technical classifications in scripture. And we have to see which technical classifications are helpful for us. Otherwise we can get lost in technicality. So uh, now if we personally find that categorization Shastriya and Laukik helpful then that is good. But, you know, I have interacted with people from different traditions. After I started traveling abroad, I go for interfaith conferences. And sometimes I, may f I find that you know, uh, Christians' faith in God, their conception of God may not be very clear. But a Christian's faith in God may be much stronger than a devotee's faith in Krishna. Although the conception may be very clear. Now you may say that, uh, okay, you can say Bible is Shastra, but then you can go into that whole discussion of what exactly is Shastra. But the point is that faith, you cannot just, uh, faith is a very subtle and profound thing. You cannot imprison faith within the parameter of Shastra. That how faith is triggered. In our own scriptures we have examples of people who had great knowledge of Shastra and had no faith in Shastra. Isn't it? We have the Yagik Brahmanas. They could quote scripture verses, they could go do Yagyas. But they didn't have much, they had knowledge of scripture. But how much faith did they have in scripture? Shukracharya was a Pandit. But he told Bali Maharaj to not surrender to Vamandev. So my point is that, you can say that is Shastriya Gyan and it is not Shastriya Shraddha. Okay, then how do we know? You know, the Shraddha is inside me. How will you really know? Is it Laukik or is it Shastriya? Does it just come from Shastric statements alone? Well, is it contemplating the scriptural statements? Now, does that mean then that if somebody is reading a translation of Shastra, then the, if, you're, if you have only read translation, you have not read the originals, you don't know the original language, then is your language, Shraddha not Shastriya? See, the idea of Shastra, we should not limit it so much. Shastra is not just a book. Shastra is a message. 
and krish it is not that krishna spoke once in shastra it is not that god speaks one time in history and after that god forever falls silent god is constantly speaking god is speaking in our hearts god is speaking in others hearts god may be even speaking through words around us so the we have the the avadut brahmana or the avanti brahmana who has 24 gurus you know he is learning from nature so you know how krishna can give us faith it's a very complex thing so let's not reduce it to shastra so somebody can get faith by studying nature so nature is also another book of god so one book of god is scripture nature can also be another book now that doesn't mean everybody who studies nature will gain faith the darwin studied nature and lost faith <laughs> so <laughs> so that is also possible ultimately each person has to choose what they do they have to choose to turn towards krishna so it's important that ultimately the shastriya nishkarsh that, that vedaishya sarvair ahameva vedyo so we have to study so that we can get to the conclusion of scripture and how do we get, how we get there that depends hmm. okay yes, actually uh, yeah, one ahead. part actually actually uh, if our conviction goes like this that uh, yes there is a materialist who is working so hard for material goals so why should we not work a bit harder uh, or a bit more austere for the purpose of satisfying krishna pleasing krishna so uh, this type of conviction does it stay long see it's difficult to say which conviction stays long it was dhruva maharaj's uh, desire even his determination we say his determination was great was it material or spiritual material well it's very difficult to say the 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 source in the sense that the cause of the determination was material but then so many people get insulted how many people still get that you know i am going to do this to get a, go to the austerities to get even so it was it material in terms of what is the situation or was it just his own constitution his own mind body subtle body then you can say the object was krishna so because the object was krishna so it is spiritual or after he changed that time it became spiritual till then it was material so and i find that this classification of material spiritual sometimes it we make it very categorical but if it is instead of focusing on material spiritual we focus on anukul pratikul what is favorable to our bhakti and what is unfavorable for our bhakti so whatever it did it was favorable for his relationship with krishna so i would say that uh, if somebody is surrounded by people who are materialistic and they seeing how hard they works inspires a person then who knows we have devotees who have created artha forum where there are these are all some people have just like enormous passion and enormous ability for business so we have one devotee he is considered a start up genius he has almost like several more than 100 companies he has started and made them big so he says that you it goes to wealthy people and says that whatever money you want to earn how much do you think you need for living comfortably somebody may say i want uh, i want uh, a bank balance of 20 crores they assume these people are very wealthy so okay you aim for a business where you get 40 crores and if you get anything about 20 crores you will give 50% in charity and people feel inspired by that and there are many business people who have actually succeeded that way and then they they feel that now i am earning not just for greed or for just my own possessiveness i am earning to give in charity so now now after that say they give charity to build a big temple so was their ambition material or spiritual doesn't matter no it's favorable so such people may say oh such people may say okay no that person that person multiplied their business i also want to multiply my business so they may get inspiration from someone else they may also get inspiration from somebody who is given charity so uh, what gives from where inspiration will come it's very difficult to say so certainly we need a devotee association to keep our goal fixed on krishna but we all need uh, 
energizers you could say so if we are not associating with devotees at all and we are constantly looking at materialists we may get inspiration from materialists to work hard but after some time that materialism will infect us i am working hard for the same purposes that the materialistic people are working for so there are two different things there is the there is the the destination and there is the energy or the fuel or the pace so the fuel energy pace we can get by looking at people in the world but the destination that conviction won't stay by just by looking at people of the world for that we need to associate with devotees is clear thank you prabhu ji yes prabhu we'll just we'll finish in 2 minutes now yeah hari krishna prabhu <coughs> my question is again related to the uh, borrowed convictions so <clears throat> you had mentioned that uh, um, uh, when we actually uh, hear or study shastras or hear from uh, a senior devotee then it's not that we purchase all the convictions a, a, a part of it we might purchase but then uh, like as a sadhaka grows in his spiritual life and he also studies scriptures like bhagavatam bhagavad gita and he sees that <coughs> uh, he has not applied everything but at least he started applying few things and it has started working so uh, so this is a kind of way by which we develop faith that at okay. least what is told is actually true i am not at, at a stage that i am able to uh, get convinced and apply it that's so, fine so same applies for even the uh, for uh, exalted souls like shila prabhupad and spiritual masters so <clears throat> now i want to ask that you mentioned we have to do contemplative uh, study and also hearing so that would change uh, that would, by that process we will able to borrow more convictions so uh, it appears that uh, if there could be some way by which we can increase the percentage of borrowed convictions that's a very healthy stage because then every hearing and reading is very very uh, pr- productive so uh, is contemplation the only way to increase the percentage of convictions or could you help us by ways by which we can increase the percentage of convictions because we have yeah, faith okay. that what is being told is true okay so is contemplation the only way not necessarily see sometimes we also have to go through certain life experiences ourselves so like the same uh, book we may read one year after bhakti and same book we read 10 years after bhakti and we'll see it in a different light because we have gone through different experiences so at certain stages in our life certain points may strike us so i don't think we can accelerate that process too much you know we sometimes we have to ourselves evolve to a particular level to gain some understandings so can we increase or can we accelerate to some extent we might be able to so having some forum for reflecting on scripture contemplation is one thing maybe just discussing with different devotees especially if you have some like minded devotees talking with them oh, okay this point i didn't think so much about this that's also an interesting point uh, i think like minded association can be very helpful because then we start we can relate with that person and then we can relate with their convictions also and those convictions can become closer to becoming internalized for us so say for example if our focus is youth outreach now somebody's conviction is centered on book distribution then you can talk with them and we'll get some inspiration how dedicated they are to book distribution but we may not feel that conviction coming to us hmm? that is the book distribution is the best way to serve krishna spread krishna's mission we say okay that's one way it's important but maybe that's not the best way we may not get that conviction so i think like minded association and reflecting and like minded association is also very helpful okay thank you yes bro you had a point <coughs> hari krishna bro ji Uh, uh, yeah. sometimes it so happens that uh, once the intellect is in control of mind things go very nicely no we are centered we yeah. are calm we are connected with the divine connected with the lord krishna consciousness but when mind takes over uh, in some situation and then we feel 
lots of misery and then we regret also. How to make intellect strong enough so that mind doesn't take over? Or especially in case of karma, krodha, lower. <coughs> well, we discussed developing convictions, hearing more regularly, speaking, writing. These are ways to develop the intelligence. And sometimes we'll talk more about the mind also. Sometimes the mind needs to be accommodated. <coughs> we are not meant to make our mind our slave or to make our mind our friend. That will be a separate topic. We'll discuss in a future in the class today. Thank you very much. Shri Prabhupada ki Gaur Bhaktavrinda ki Tai Gaur Premanante.